to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And welcome to all this October something, 17th County Council meeting to order. Um, all council members are present. Uh, first on the agenda, well, we're going to stray from the agenda. Jerry asked if she could speak first. She has a six o'clock meeting, so Jerry, you're up. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing. Uh, you're doing busy. Hey, you in here. You're doing busy. Sure. These documents I'm conveying to you right now um, were 100% correct yesterday, although it's changed today. So uh, that's the way things happen or how the things evolve. Um, we've now had uh, 58 uh, families that we've served for Fulton County this year, um, including one this afternoon. And we've had 33 males and 25 females. Uh, Fulton County's had 158 deaths, including 80 males and 78 females. Um, so therefore, you can see that um, our department is assisting um, with about one third of the deaths that occur in Fulton County, or 33%. Um, just to let you know, we have one undetermined, 48 natural, um, six accident, uh, there is two pending their autopsies, and then we have uh, one that a person took their life. So with that said, we've had eight autopsies, 13 labs, which would be draws that we do for like troponin, the D-dimer, glucose, and things like that. Um, we've also had uh, eight uh, draws for toxicology and then we've had 11 additional which would make 19 for the year so I wanted to let you know about that our statistics for up to this point up to today for this year um, also I wanted to let you know that uh, on November 8th um, at the detention center classroom and then we'll move to the forensic center uh, area we're going to be hosting a, a radiology um, that will compare and contrast radiology as a uh, relevance to forensics and then also to the live human being. And so it's a class from IU Kokomo that's coming up to visit with us and be with us. And Margo's arranged all that. So we're real excited to be able to host uh, those students. And that'll be again on November 8th. Uh, great news. Um, I'm right on the edge, but I think it's going to be great news. Uh, Duke Energy has indicated they are going to convey some sort of a grant to us. It'll be between 4,500 and 5,000 that will be used for the local emergency planning committee, LEPC. And we're always in the midst of doing many things. We've got a tabletop coming up on December 13th. And then uh, we're already starting to make some plans. As soon as that's over, we'll have our after action report and we'll be doing um, some planning for next year, which will be a live scene. Uh, type thing and that's in the name of safety and it helps us to get other grants our snow uh, removal emergency money and other emergencies that come up in the county so um, we're always wanting to practice and get better and do well with what we do so uh, that's coming up um, also I have one other thing um, as you know uh, on May 3rd we had our power cot with power load installed um, up in uh, Middlebury and so with that, we should probably uh, enlist in a service contract. And I've received a quote um, on the service contract. I should have a bill soon for that, but it'll be activated um, in February 1st um, of 2024, because uh, that's when the cot was released. And even though we didn't deploy it till May 3rd, but uh, it'll be a cost of $8,513. And what that is, it's for a three-year contract. So um, that'll be for the next years, uh, 2024, 25, and 26. 
it expires in uh, January 31st, 2027. And I'll have more details for you on that. The minute I get them, I was hoping that I would get them this afternoon so you'd have something in your hands, but I will get that to you. And I do want to tell you, we do have money in the budget for that. It's in the equipment area, so we're okay with that. But I just wanted to let you know, um, want to be proactive and keep our beautiful equipment running smoothly and nicely. And it's been very much appreciated by all of us. Is that a total of three years or is that much a year? That's a total of three years, that's is the 8,500, yes. That's for all three years. Yeah, that's for three years. So that makes it pretty good. And I mean, I feel like things are gonna be lasting nicely and beautifully, but you never know. We've got these little arms that's, that come out that actually retract the cot on in. And um, when you're on uneven terrain, or like soft yards and things like that when you're trying to roll a cot over with a plus size person it's uh it's kind of tricky so you know that's something i can see that something could happen like that when you're trying to get somebody in when it's smooth on the ground or like on the carpet in here it makes it much easier so just wanted to let you know that we do have money in the budget for that I won't have to ask for any but i just kind of Wanted to keep you updated on what was shaking in the corners department. We appreciate it. Okay. Any, any questions or comments, board members, for Jerry before she flies out of here? Nothing? Anything for Jerry from the audience? Thank you much. Thank you so much. Be safe and you guys have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda, Michael Lack. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to present Chris Harrison to you at the moment. Okay. Uh, he has a request for the city of village of Kwan. Okay. And so I'm going to just step back and let Chris take it. Okay. Hi, I'm Chris Harrison. Um, I'm development uh, business development manager for Commonwealth Engineers, but also I'm a grant administrator. And uh, we're requesting uh, funds from the county to offset some expenses for Kiwana for a major project that uh, is occurring in the community. Um, approximately about a year ago, the uh, town of Kiwana um, asked the um, county for ARPA funding to do a preliminary engineering review. Those funds, um, we did the preliminary engineering review and uh, it ended up being into a large water project for the community. The project consists of about $6.6 .6 million, and we were able to obtain $6 million in grant funding. So by taking that offer, uh, ARP funding and leveraging those funds, we turned it into $6 million. Now what will this provide for the community? Uh, part of the funding will be used for lead service replacement. Everyone's heard the concerns of lead with the uh, Flint, Michigan. This will make uh, Kiwana basically lead-free community within the state. But the majority of the funding will go through for a new water treatment plant. This is a filter treatment plant to help remove iron for aesthetic needs, but also to remove arsenic and manganese, which are a health concern for the community. The arsenic levels are right below the maximum contamination levels, and the manganese are pretty high as well. This filter treatment plant will eliminate that within the community. Um, also stays in the community for economic growth, obviously with the state of clean water. Where we're at with the process is that the community needs to flow a band, and this is a bond anticipated note to basically do the design construction phase of the project before the state revolving fund can issue the actual loan process for the project. Um, with that, we're asking the county to basically give a short-term loan, zero interest loan for 500,000. Uh, what this will do will save the community of Kiwana around $45,000. The thing about it is we have a $6 million grant of a $6.6 .6 million project but the problem we're having that 600,000 that will have to go into a loan, a low interest loan, is that the community has very limited customer base. 
So even a hit of 45,000 is a significant increase to the community. And if we can defer that by um, the county providing that short term interest loan, we think that would be a benefit long term for the community of Kiwana. Um, here again, the project uh, will go under design construction. And then once that's completed, the Indiana Financial Authority will issue the loan to the community through the state revolving funds. And that is to occur in March of 2024. So we're anticipating that the loan will be paid back to the, to the uh, county in April of 2024. So with that, do I have any questions or concerns? Did you present this to the commissioners last night? I did, and they, they moved forward with approving it, yes. It was unanimous, so last night. It was? Yeah. Okay. Phil, they, they, they really liked this project, this one. Phil, before you, I have um, a, basically an outline uh, interlocal cooperation agreement <coughs> that has been used between other towns and counties that basically outlines what the agreement would be. We'd like to get this validated by the attorneys before uh, signatures are posted, um, obviously. Once that is completed, though, we'd like to move forward with that short-term loan for the town of Kiwana. So what we're asking is that approval by the, uh, the council with the intent of the lawyers taking a look at this and approving the, the documentation. Um, so I don't know, so can counties loan money, can we do that legally? Can the county loan money to the town of Kiwana? Anybody, can we do that? That's what I want to hear from the attorneys, I guess. Bill, we'll, we'll let the attorneys tell you that, but the document you have before us was for the town of Laurel and the uh, county of Franklin. Okay. So it has been done in other communities. Okay. So we're not we're not trying to reinvent the will. We're giving you a structured document that has been walked its way through the process in the past. Okay. So at this point, you're want, I'm hearing that you're wanting our approval to move forward in the process. Well, with, and move forward for the short-term loan with the approval of the attorneys looking at the okay. documents. Okay. So what fund do we do that from? Well, that's, just rainy day. that's you know, what I can think of. Because we don't want to mess with the coast fee yeah. because of the angle. Right. So rainy day, and especially it's going to get replaced okay. in six months. And we have sufficient funds in rainy day. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, just checking. So you're yeah, that's that. that's the okay. that's the big concern here. You know, is it is a short term loan, and then uh, once the uh, state revolving fund is completed, it'd be uh, reversed back to the <coughs> county. Um, April, here again, as well, April ish. April, April ish. Yeah. Now we do have a timeline on here, but as soon as it also states once that state revolving fund is completed, that the, the town will reimburse the county. And here again, um, they, they were estimating the forty-five thousand, which I think is a good number. Savings that that those funds, that fee would have to go back into rate base for those those customers. So it's a huge win for the customers of Kiwana. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments for Mr. Excuse me, is it Harrison? Yes, Harrison. Yes, Mr. Harrison. So we can make the motion subject to county attorney's approval of the contract. That's what he's asking, right? Yes. I mean, yes. that would basically yes. we can approve it subject our attorney saying everything's good. Right. Okay. Right. That's, I think that's an important thing, making sure that it, she's that it checks everything with the attorney. Yes. Also with me tonight is uh, town council president Duran Collins and the project engineer Andrew Robarge. If you have any further questions on the project itself, I think it's a huge win for the community and the fact that we, we took the ARPA funding and we leveraged it up to six million dollars. Mm -hmm. This is this is probably a once in a lifetime for the community. Questions, comments? I have a question. <clears throat> uh, did they determine where the contamination was coming from? 
Arsenic is naturally found in Indiana water, and depend, depending on where your aquifer is, <coughs> it is a metal, it, depending where your aquifer, aquifer is and the arsenic concentration, that's basically, it's, it's in the area. Same thing with mag, the manganese. Manganese is real familiar with that. Many of you that live on farms, you, you have heavy iron, which you want it does. This will clean that up and make it aesthetically clean, but you also deal with manganese. Typically, arsenic you don't see unless you test your water, but it is normally found throughout Indiana. Okay, thank you. It just seems like it's a project that would never happen without without our help, without ARPA funds leveraged into a massive grant. Right. I mean, this is a project a county our size could never afford sure. without this help. Sure. Pete, that's a true statement, and you know, with this as a standalone. The town of Kiwana would never be no. moving forward with this project. Okay. There's not enough residents to ever go. Yes. You can't pay for it. We're almost turned it down because of the impact to the customers. Right. There was one an 89% increase, and with Commonwealth and Baker Jelly, they crunched the numbers and got it down to 42% increase. You know, it's hard to take a low to moderate income community and expect to put that kind of, get that kind of money out. So we were able to get it down to 42%, then we thought it was affordable. How do you turn down $6 million? That's a question. Sure. Yeah, no. Well, if they did, yeah. let's, say, let's say they walked away from the project, we're they, st mm -hmm. they still have the health and safety issue with the arsenic and main needs. Right. And, I, and to be honest with you, uh, those two items were the pushers with the funding, um, let alone the removal of the lead services in the community. We all know that since Flint, Michigan, that has been a, a health concern as well. So there's a lot of wins for the community that are occurring here. And one of the things that we did look at while we're walking through the process is how can we look at the scorecard and identify make make Kiwana successful and Kiwana pushed a lot of those buttons and I remember hey we need to take a water test and that water test to then find the arsenic and manganese levels that were high we knew the iron was there we know we knew this process would clean up and make it stable clean but uh, the benefit is the limiting health risk <clears throat> talk about building a new ready water plant basically? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now the current process, they pump water out of the ground, they add chlorine to it, and it goes to the customer. Yeah. And as soon as that as soon as that iron hits that that chlorine, it turns red, and that's what the customer's good water has been dealing with since it's put in. Any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Pete made the motion. Based on based on based on attorney approval. Based on attorney approval. Based on attorney approval, I'll make the motion and we move on. That we give the town of Kiwana a short term, no interest, um, half million dollar loan, anticipated to be paid back April ish, 2024, based on approval of attorneys. Pete made the motion. Ron seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm glad we could help. Thanks so much. Uh, I think all you know already, too, is on top of us. And um, the schedule is going to be short and sweet. They're winding the projects. Uh, worked on in uh, by February and <clears throat> not worked on but uh, decided to fund whatnot. Um, we have a county steering committee composed of myself and, and uh, Brian Johnson from the Community Foundation. Um, the new mayor is going to, is already agreed he's going to participate this time. Uh, so we'll have city participation. Uh, Janet Vance is going to continue on the on this committee and we need some county representation and so I'm going to ask tonight um, I'm just going to take it upon myself and ask that um, 
the council appoint Pete Karras as your representative to the uh, to the steering committee. Does Pete Karras want to do that? Last time I talked to him, he did. He does. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> he said he would do it if, if the group wanted him to do it. Well, the group wants him to do it. We need the representation. Well, we think yeah. Pete will be a good representative. <laughs> So I, I think Pete would be a fine representative if he wants to do it. Is everybody in agreement that Pete wants to do it? We all agree that Pete does want to do it. <laughs> See how this works, Pete? Yeah. 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 What you wish for. <laughs> Couldn't sit on the board, but we can get you on the on the room. Um, just a quick update on the housing study um we're getting ready on the 26th to be a virtual conference um rfis have been put out request for information and um we'll find out what the responses are they're kind of holding every all the information close right now um we're going to get into uh looking for site prioritizations and partners construction partners and, and such things like this in this next one so at the next meeting I'm anticipating a lot more detail for you at this point in time. Um, that's uh, you and I have talked about downtown. Mm -hmm. Can I make that pitch, or is sure. it too late? Go. Okay. Go. Go ahead. Um, I'm not speaking for FECO right now. I'm <laughs> speaking for as a former Main Street director. And I'm also speaking as the economic development director here for the county. Um, one of the things that is needed, I'd ask you to consider um, putting in somewhere, either in my budget or a line item in yours, a $15,000 line item for a downtown Rochester partnership, mixed with that would match. A similar amount of money that the city has been giving the partnership for many many years but were never released um, for various reasons it doesn't matter what it is at this point um, with this money they can hire a full-time person to work and, and that's what is needed at this moment in time is we need somebody to start paying attention to downtown on a full-time basis I'm not gonna be able to do it because of some other projects um, I think I have talked to some of you privately before this that uh, if the county does do this, there should be some stipulations that this person would appear before you and do the same thing I'm doing now, report to you, have, their, have transparency and such. And then the other stipulation as far as, this is just me speaking that should happen, is um, this person should reach out to this other communities in this county and see if they can assist them with events and, and projects and programs too. It would be kind of unique in the state because usually these groups downtown, they just focus on the downtown. We're small enough that we can we can pull this off and, and do it right. Um, that's the pitch. It's, if there's any questions, I'll try and answer them. And this event planner, for lack of that's that's what position. they're calling it right now. Sure. You know, sure. executive director of the planning sure. department. Sure. This person would report to its own board. Who? Okay. <coughs> they have a board. I'm on the board. Um, but as I said, they would also do timely reports to city council, county commissioners, county council. Same thing I do. Okay, and, and the board as in Rochester Downtown Partnership. Yes. But then this event planner would uh, uh, help or assist all the communities in the county. That's the way I see it. As needed. Yes. Is, is there a um, job description for this <clears throat> to be person? There isn't even a job right now, but no, there's not a job description. One could be worked out. Okay. It's okay. just for your consideration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Okay. I'm not asking you right now to. I understand. You know, well, I understand. And I can. I'll, I'll drag up a job description in the morning and, and email it all over to you guys. That's, if that's what you just want. Just asking questions. I'll find no, my that's fine. 
But if you want to, if the, the bottom line is, if you want to bring businesses into the downtown areas, you got to bring people. And events are how you bring down people. I've done this. I did it in America. I'm not taking credit for the way Marion, Indiana, looks like now, but uh, <laughs> it was pretty good when I was there. Um, and that is part of the program. It's the Main Street program. If you hire, if they're allowed to hire somebody, right now they're technically not a Main Street program. You have to have a full-time employee. This would make them a full-time uh, Main Street program eligible and make them more eligible for more grants. Hmm. More grants, more money, yeah. and you can get things done. Hmm. <coughs> okay. I got a question. Uh, uh, is that being working with the chamber or are they working with FedCo or do, is that an independent group? or? It's technically it's an independent group, but the chamber and I both sit on the group <coughs> right now. The problem you've got is um, the board is composed of volunteers, Randy, and they all have other jobs. This puts somebody like me in that area, and that's their focus all day long. And that's what you need to make it happen. You, you actually need a body in there to, to make it work. I'm just like thinking in my out loud, I guess, but where would their office be? Where would they work out of? And, you know. We can sweat that out once we, we know we have somebody. I mean, there's plenty of places around here that, that uh, we can move them into where we are. We can, uh, if they want a different location, we can do that too. Would the downtown partnership be there? That person's employer, then, or who would they Technically, yeah. Okay. The way that I'm FECFO's employee? Yes, that's so why it, it, it'd be exactly the same. Right. All you're doing is the same okay. thing. Hmm. Food for thought. Other yeah. questions or comments? No. Board members. <laughs> Thank you much. Okay, next on the agenda department updates. Kathy, do you have anything? Just observing? Observing. John. John Flynn. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Are you up to date? What we've got going on? Um, activities, what we're doing is a uh, Continuing with the press chopper, um, that's been working out pretty well for us. Um, then we're also been out with continuing pugging. We still got a little bit more to do on that. And uh, last week we had a culvert that uh, got damaged over on our detour on 400 East that needed to be replaced. So we were able to get that um, put back together and the detour turned back to 400 East. Um, update of the community crossing grants um, for Pender and Brown. That one, uh, they, my understanding is they're gonna start milling in that on the 26th on 450 four, four North between Old 31 and 375 West. And then uh, possibly what they're preventing on the 30th start pave, or paving. Um, and then also they're doing for the community crossing grant this round 700 North between Old 31 to 250 East. Um, update on Bridge 50 um, over the Tip Canoe. Um, I believe they're starting to do an overlay this week and next week they're going to start working on the wing walls. My understanding or from what I heard is that you're um, at schedule or before schedule. So um, I believe November 8th was the planned opening for that. Back to normal. And they're still on track for that? I believe so. That or a little head. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> um, in your packet, you should have about an asphalt roller we're requesting to buy. It's a used roller. Um, it's a 2015 um, for $70,000. Um, we used this to actually this year. We had to rent a roller. Or, um, regular roller we have went down. So we had to print this. Um, and they came back with an offer for us to buy it outright from them. 
So um, we have the funds to buy it. Um, we're going to keep the old roller. Um, roll, roller is a little bit wider, can be used for other t different type of jobs or as a backup roller if this one in the future would go down. So I guess we're just asking for your approval. So and, and you have the funds hiding someplace. We might have to move them around, but my understanding is you have the funds. Okay. Say they're going to take away your paper and run for it already off Yes, I believe, um, I don't know if I have that written down, how much the other roller was, um, I think it was um, under 6000 like 5900 was what the round was, and I'll take that off the church. I believe that's correct. Our old roller is 1997. That we also paid seventy thousand dollars for brand new back then. So it's done. It's due. It's done. It's due. A new one's over twice that much. Mm -hmm. So seventy thousand is a good deal. Yes. So this is a one-time offer. And this is the one we we have. So it's we rented this one. So we know we know. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's been sent back. We don't have it right now. No, but I mean we've used it, so yeah. we know that we had it for over a month. So this this roller, brand new, it's what is it, 2015, I believe. Yes. But th if we was to buy this roller brand new today, it'd be two hundred thousand dollars. And this is still available to buy at seven. They're holding it for us. They are till okay. till we make a decision to know. Oh, okay. Questions, comments about the roller board members? It, it, uh, did you I make a motion? Make a motion to get it. Steve made a motion. Brandon Second. seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. Don't pick it up. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, also, with federal aid call for the project for. Um, Old 31 North, I believe it's going to be between October 31st and December 1st and when it opens. Um, what we need is a financial commitment letter signed. Um, this project is from the bridge up to um, 110 pretty much. It's, um, I don't know if you guys got that in your packet. It is a pretty expensive project total. I think the total project, their estimating is over $8 million. Um, to do it, but we're going to widen out and through the hills, um, widen out the road far enough for buggies and also for bicycles and stuff. We went twice before after this, and we're going to attempt for the third time to see if we can get the funding secured for this. Um, our local match is going to be um, one million six hundred thirty-seven thousand. Well, it's in five years is typically how these federal aids work, so. Um, we're going to have to put back money each year to cover for that cost. And, and this is the third time you've gone after this? Yes. Well, we're going to think third time's a charm. Yeah. We'll start it. I guess so. I do need the signature. So, so, you, guys so you want that. approval to go after this? Nice. Is, and this is a community crossing? Is that what I'm This is a federal aid. Project. Federal aid. Yeah. That was By way, are you talking us or are you talking highway? When you say we need to set money back. The county as a whole, yeah. So yeah. If you want if you want to fund this. No, so I'm like, just asking who's gonna come up with <coughs> what, what, what we've yeah, who's what we've league? done in the past on other federal aid on the old thirty one south, I've saved back each year out of wheel tax surtax, and that was my plan on this was to use those funds again That's um, but so, if, if you have another alternate idea I'd be more than happy to entertain hey, that this is your baby not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's how I was okay, right. so if this is your third time mm -hmm. so applying for this you've already been putting money back I'm no. assuming, what? <laughs> assuming <laughs> uh, thinking that you were going to be awarded so you've already started saving is that correct no Oh, <laughs> or? we're not going to lie to you, though. <laughs> okay. No. No. okay. No, we've been saving for other projects in Old 31 South, which we let that in January of next year. Okay. 
and that goes to project next summer. Um, so we'll start saving the funds from that we've been setting aside for that project for the last five years, and we'll put towards this. Okay. Uh, hopefully, NDOT's gracious enough to give us more than our match on that, which they have done on other projects, and mm -hmm. if they do, we'll throw that extra towards this, if we get awarded this. When will you hear? Uh, it'll probably be around March or okay. April. Okay. Uh, so on this call, I'm being more aggressive, uh, throwing more things at them this time than in the past, uh, more of the safety concerns. We're going around to all the businesses along 31, uh, asking for letters of support. Uh, we're taking, we're documenting, yeah, we're documenting uh, all the safety concerns, taking pictures, uh, reaching out to the Amish, getting letters of support and uh, reaching out to the Amish, getting their opinions and asking for letters from them about their safety concerns and why they would like uh, alternate transportation lanes is what they're called okay. uh, for traveling up and down the hills there. Yep. Uh, you know, why it's not safe for them. So we're, we're going at it a lot more aggressively this time. So those letters of support will go along with? Yes, there will be a whole stack of documents that go with the application. Oh, wow. So Cool. Uh, it's going to be, you know, like you said, third time's a charm. <laughs> and we're, we're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at it this Good time. Good for you. So, so then, do we have a motion? I make a motion we move forward. Mm -hmm. All in favor, uh, so Lori made the motion. Move forward, I'm sorry, who seconded it? Jay seconded, all in favor, signify raising your hands. Lori carries 7-0. I'm signing and passing and passing. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. 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 Um, to open up our fall threads and stuff like that. It's the last thing I have on the list here. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I have a comment. Uh, okay. I'm ready. <clears throat> I, I just wanted to compliment you guys on the brush cutting out there on Old 31 there by Geneva Center right through there. Uh, coming through there the other day and it's, it's very done a nice job getting that peeled back where you can see a deer standing out there and then to widen that it's going to facilitate doing that better so give you a little uh, kudo there for your job looks nice thank you i'm sure they appreciate it okay sheriff Heichman. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, so. Good, thank you. I emailed the uh, reports out yesterday. Everybody get yep, those. We got them. Any questions or anything over those? I have no questions. I will uh, bore you with them then. So uh, we had our JCAT graduation on Saturday. We had probably between 60 and 70 people show for that. Um, fantastic turnout. We had uh, service providers throughout the county, family members, and the graduates, and then. Uh, Prosecutor's office and probation was also represented there, so um, super good turnout for that. We couldn't have been more happy with that. So, and you uh, had how many graduates? Two graduates. Two. Yep, two graduates. So then probably 65, 70 people between between the banks and four county and things like that, uh, along with family members and, and staff and things. So um, we're looking at probably starting the next one up in January, um, the next class up. And this is the first time. Yes. The program. Yes. And you and you are pleased <coughs> with the results. Absolutely. And it, yeah. Yeah. it turned out as you hoped it would. Yeah. I mean, there's always there's always learning curves with right. uh, with new programs, but yeah, yeah, it's it's as well or better than I could hope for. So definitely. So and they'll tweak it, and we'll get it we'll get it fine tuned each time. So. So so then the next program in January will that 
be with two individuals as well, or will that increase? Or we started off with yet? several more. Uh, we made it clear to them in July when we talked to the inmates that it wasn't going to be an easy program and they had to invest themselves. Um, okay. So if it was an easy program, we would have graduated a lot more on Saturday. Um, so I foresee the same thing in January. I think we'll start off. I think I think I think people will realize that that they're not ready for the change. They're not ready to invest themselves in the in the curriculum and. I think we'll lose some. I'd be naive to believe that we wouldn't lose any in any okay. of the classes. So. Interesting. All right. Thank you. Um, we picked up our last Tahoe last week um, from uh, Fort Wayne. So it's a cops here getting set up. We're hoping to have all of them on the road by the uh, by the end of the year. Um, so and then talking to Kelly Chevy, the 24s, it's kind of a nightmare right now as far as what they're going to do for production, how long they're going to produce, or how many they're going to produce. So we're going to try to cabbage on to two of them for next year, um, but we'll just have to see. Um, we transferred today one of the 2015 Ford F-150 pickup trucks, something we took out of commission, transferred that to EMA for their use. Um, still had a lot of life on it, it just wasn't patrol life. Um, our guys are pretty rough on it. On the vehicle, so um, I think it'll do them perfect for what, what they need it for. So, yesterday morning we had 93 inmates. Um, of those, 36 were being housed from other jurisdictions, including six for the Marshal Service. Um, last month in September, we invoiced for $76,000 for out of county inmates um, to get paid for. Um, we're taking a 2015 Ford Explorer to uh, auction as soon as we get one of our Tahoe's delivered. We're just kind of doing the, uh, the big swap. Um, food service contract, we talked with them today. Um, food service for 2024 went up 7%, um, which is pretty much what we expected. Um, it sounds a lot better when it, you say 16 cents a meal, so for 7%, so it's roughly 16 cents a meal that the, that the contract went up. So. Um, and you're still happy with them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. uh, we had. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say enough about them. And I, the cost, we tried it. Um, you know, obviously the county had their own food service kitchen staff and everything before, and we can't do it anywhere close to that cheap. So, um, yeah, definitely, we're super happy with it. So the nice thing about that is they have a dietitian on staff. They also have uh, uh, chaplains for the different religious meals and things. Uh, we have to be really careful with those um, based off of. Uh, uh, religious preferences and things on what we can serve and not serve and you can get in a trick basket real quick not knowing that so the fact that they've got the dietitian and, and the religious diets available it, it's a no-brainer for us to even not have to think about it so interesting okay um, i sent you guys out an email back in september concerning uh some storage issues out there i know it's not a new thing i just want to bring it up um, again uh, we had our jail inspection in September, and we just we absolutely do not have adequate storage for for equipment out there, specifically maintenance equipment, attic stock, things like that. Um, when we were housing just our inmates, we had the ability to kind of hide things um, and and some of the empty pods. We could put the lift in there. We could put ladders in there and things that were inmates weren't being housed. Um, with the additional inmates, obviously it's generating additional revenue, but the, the bad, the, the caveat to that is we're running out of storage. Um, so we had the uh, jail, uh, the jail inspection. Um, we did get named because you know we've got scissor lifts and, and evacuation routes and things for um, inmates. Uh, fire marshal came through and didn't like where we've got stuff packed in front of uh, electrical boxes and things. Um, we are also paying for storage units for attic stock from the construction project. We've been paying for that roughly two years. Um, we've got two storage units on that. Um, so I guess is what I'm looking at, and I talked to the, the I've been to the commissioners twice now. They've got Chad looking into getting getting designs and getting at least a cost estimate on a maintenance building out there. Um, I know Kathy has addressed some storage issues for documents. I don't know if that's something that we can all combine on and put our heads together and come up with something that they can fulfill a bunch of needs in one spot or not. Um, one thing we do get every year in July is we get reimbursement from the state for level six inmates. When they revamped the criminal code back in 2015, 16-ish, that was part of the uh, was part of the revamp was you get reimbursed for holding the level six inmates that DOC used to hold. Um, and that's been to the tune of 156,000 for the county since 2017, I believe. Um, 
best of my knowledge, I just was at the county general, so that could definitely be a funding mechanism um, for a maintenance building um, to where we'd be able to utilize those funds coming back from the state without having to, to tap into any of our taxpayers, or directly our taxpayers. So um, to me, it's a win-win, but obviously you guys are the, uh, the, the first string. So um, more rad on that, though, is Chad's working on getting get some hard big research together so we can try to come up with an idea. So I'm going to get so, so you're planting a seed. Planting a seed is, I think, is what the email said. So, okay. But okay. It's, it's a problem that, I mean, it's been there and it's not going to go away. It's just going to continue to get worse. So okay. um, we've got, you guys have got equipment that you paid for that's just being stored outside behind the tower because we have no place to put it. So you've got, you've got equipment that's sitting out there that's just getting weathered and deteriorated because we, we don't have adequate storage for it. It's not, you know, to me, that's not, that's not a reasonable expectation for for that stuff. I mean, even just ladders and things like that. They're just sitting outside. And we can't have them up against the building because of the fire lanes. We can't have them in the garage because of because of uh, evacuation. So it's, I mean, they're out behind the tower. So um, it's just, it's not a good situation, so. Understood. Any maybe, questions? Maybe, maybe the highway department has extra room. Well, we did give them some gas cans that we can't store inside, we found out, so. <laughs> Well, since we're talking about buildings <laughs> <laughs> and needing room. Put you on the list, too? Well. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe we could get a, a, like a bundle deal. Buy one, get two free, something yeah, like that. Yeah, there you go. You know, maybe we could talk to a builder and we could, you know, build them a building, build us a building. Don't leave us out. Build, build the treasure a building. <laughs> you guys, good for you. Why you got your thinking caps on? Get a, get a bundle deal. Any no. questions for me? Or <laughs> Any questions for Travis, board members? Thank the, you much. The 76,004 inmates, I will tell you, uh, that was a three month reimbursement or three month <laughs> retroactive thing for DOC because we hadn't been billing them. So don't expect quite that much every month. So that was three months of DOC, but uh, we're gonna keep plugging away and, and bring as many as we can. So. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Gail. To you. Okay. You can move that point in so you're not blinded by the sun if you want to. I don't know where you're put it, but I'll need to talk to you anyway. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't, you don't want to talk to Pete. We'll put him on another bo uh, another board. Yeah. No, Michael. What do you got? <laughs> okay, I just have one, maybe two things, real quick. Um, I did talk to the commissioners about the radios, um, the SHSP grant that we were denied. Um, I did talk to a council member, um, and we discussed the art. Okay. Commissioners didn't care for the ARPA funds, but I will tell you the volunteer fire departments will come at you at one time or some time and ask for a percentage of the lit fund. And to come up with that, we are looking at a different brand of radios. Akron and Abenabi are trying out the new tape radios. Um, we do have transmitter receivers on the tape end of it at our base stations that have lasted since 2012. On wood, but they've been very good uh, pieces of equipment. They're comparable to Motorola with a fraction of the cost. Um, like I said, Akron at this time is testing out a dual band on uh, the brand is Tate. So, with that being said, the SHSP grant was 150000 I was going to use a portion of the 901 funds to offset that. Um, you know, cost savings or whatever that match we needed um, on that grant. So asking the commissioners, they said something about the host fees, but I, you guys are the first three. So um, what I'd like to do is get a quote on those radios and bring them back um, to the table and let you know, but they are trying those out. So as soon as I can get a quote for those radios, I will email that and pass it along maybe where we can come up with some funds, but um, some of them have saved a fraction of their money 
that was given to them last year uh, for radios and some they need the air packs and some of those things to get their stills. Equipment replaced that they haven't <coughs> for years that was very, very outdated. So with the new ambulance service and the dependencies on some things, the first responders, volunteers are very precious, I will say that. So um, I just wanted to bring it up and see what your questions, concerns, or thoughts were. So this, um, whatever the letters were for the grant, the S-P-U-C-C-L-Y, whatever you said, <coughs> grant, can, can you apply for that? You can apply I mean, for every, off of, every year you can apply for that. Okay. So, that so, so does that mean like beginning year. 2024 you could? Not until May. Okay, okay, gotcha. Not until May. Okay, I was just curious. Okay. So, okay. So that was a grant that her and I both applied for. I remember. Got the night. Yeah, I remember. The radios are at end of life. Um, the batteries are not there. You cannot purchase the batteries, the ones that you do probably don't last, but what, Travis, you I mean, you were the last one to buy them off the... We had a heck of a time finding, I finally found Motorola batteries, but we were using Chinese batteries off Amazon and they weren't, I mean, we, we were having a heck of a time. We were, our, our backs were to the wall until we found the Motorola batteries and we cabbaged up as many of those as we could, but it's just a matter of time until those cycle through their life and then we're right back to the, the same spot, so. Yeah, they are at the end of the uh, Cybersecurity was, I think I talked to you about this last month, but was the main focus, I believe, this year for the Terrorism Act um, or grants. Basically, that's what that is. So, okay. and it's a very competitive grant. Mm -hmm. So, um, we did get letters from IPSC and followed everything. It's nothing that we did, it was what was chosen. Right, right. Um, on a good note, I did apply for the HMEE grant and was awarded that today. So um, that's $5,000, but that didn't go very far. But, uh, every so little, every little, every little bit. Every little bit. And that goes to the OEPC for training and stuff because that's very expensive. So um, trying to build that up. But anyway, that's all I have for that and wanted to bring that to the table. I said I have talked to a prior council member. We were in quite a few meetings last week. ARPA funds were mentioned, but commissioners want to see that bring money back into the or make how they put that make it more bang for its buck. So, so the ARPA did. funds didn't they didn't like the ARPA funds? They didn't. Christine, after Apache Drive was taken out, can you tell us how much? Our friends are left. I can email to you later. Okay, please do. Because I know Apache drives that. Uh, sure. So we would need to meet with that group anyway, and we don't know how about to do that. So, or who's on that? Randy and Jim are no longer here, so. Correct. Just you, Bill, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just me. Just you. I don't know. Just me and Brian. You and Brian. You're right. So anyway, um, you can let me know your thoughts on that, and I am going to continue to move forward and do some research on that and get some kind of price quotes to you instead of them asking for a percentage of the load plan every year. Are they able to apply for that grant, or is it just? They are, they have, a, yes, they can apply for that grant as well, but I went ahead and did it under an umbrella for everybody. Sure. Um, and they tried the firefighting grant as well. Uh, they were denied and believe they're zero fundage in that. So we're trying to come up with different things. And, and you're looking at a ballpark of 200000 is, I'd like to is, spend under a hundred thousand if I can. That's how inexpensive the tapers are. A hundred thousand? Yeah. Oh wow. That's, that's that helps. That helps about a hundred thousand. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no,
and what they're comparable to, and they have Bluetooth capabilities that the Motorola has that, that most of the fire departments were looking at, as well as the upscale Kenwoods for like getting into the schools or those buildings that have the metal roofs. That's the major concern with them. And last but not least, if you were not here, uh, they did read off the ambulance numbers and the proposals, but I will tell you those no more enters are in negotiations, so they do not mean anything. I can read them to you or... Um, Please. Okay, so Heartland came in at, for three years, check. So per year, for three ambulances and one chase truck was 1.35 million which it is 120, or check, $112,000 a month. So, and that was who? Heartland. Or you could get two ambulances with a chase truck at 900,000 a year and 75,000 monthly. And those trucks are for inter-facility transports. The next two groups that I'm gonna give you did not give the preliminary, uh, but if I can talk, um, we have to read in their proposal what their money is going to. So Lutheran the first year said we owe nothing. The second year was 400000 The third year was 420000 And the fourth year was 421000 And I can't tell you what that's for, if that's just for one ambulances or what one ambulance versus all ambulances, but um, I, two years ago they asked for 800,000 for one ambulance in Akron. So we need to read that, and again, these numbers don't mean anything because they're all in negotiation and what is in their proposal. Just a reminder, okay. The third one is Parkview. The first year was 2.4 million. The second year was 1.2 million. The third year was 1.2 million and the fourth year was 950,000. So just a stupid question about all three. I'm assuming that when the committee met and reviewed their <coughs> proposals, all three proposals met all specifications asked for. Those Is are that a correct suite. statement? We haven't met yet. Yeah. Oh, you haven't? Oh, no. so we haven't met. So okay, okay. You, Heartland had it all on one page where you could read what that money went towards per the RFP that was requested. Okay. Each three territories are requesting an ambulance and with a possible chase truck. Okay. That is their numbers for the ambulances that they provided with those numbers. Okay. So, like I said, you, their interviews are this week. The proposal books will be handed to the uh, group of individuals that have been selected. Right. And we will have our homework and we'll have to uh, deliver that message back to commissioners by November the 6th. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So Thank we you. will, uh, Barry, myself, and Brett are reading those currently that came in yesterday to try to find out what that money uh, is going for and what it entails. Right. Okay. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Steve? Well, the list of the between a chase truck and hand was a question. Uh, that's in the provisions. I can't tell you that. I don't know. Each one of them is different. I don't know what they're equipped with, and they, it should list that in their uh, proposal. <coughs> so I be factual on that. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. I have a question. Randy? Uh, how did we arrive at the conclusion that uh, going this route versus private mm -hmm. uh, by the county? I guess I'm, I'm not familiar who's uh, made the decision to go with the uh, after talking with Cass, some people from Cass County, they said that they saved 
a lot of money and thought they got a lot more bang for their buck when they uh, purchased the ambulance service themselves. And I said it wasn't even close. So I, I guess my question is, have, have they explored those options? What's, you know, what's available? I don't know. I, I, the one girl I know real well down at Logan, and she said it wasn't even close. First of all, and I'll answer your question on my personal opinion, and I know I have two others here that were in that cahoots with me. First of all, the staffing. We're, none of us here have the medical background to run an ambulance service. You have to have that medical backing. The folks that we had in charge, no disrespect to them, but it was, a, it was troublesome. It was hard to run. Um, and then keeping employees, and then um, having like your medical direction and so forth. It is, it is big. Um, like I said, and I can't take on anymore. I'm already strapped, so and I don't have that knowledge. That's not my lane of traffic. So to me, <coughs> I'm out. Uh, the commissioners don't want anything with it, and it's no disrespect again to those individuals, but you have to be in that field. You have to have the certifications and the medical backing, and somebody has to oversee that stuff, and that is a big liability, and then dealing with Medicare <coughs> Medicaid, the billing, the uh, going after those folks that can't pay that, unfortunately, um, it's too much, and I don't know how they're, they're doing it. They're, maybe they're lucky, but um, the other two gals here can speak on that, but it was very trying, and, I wouldn't wish that headache on anybody unless you're in that field. Well, wasn't, wasn't that why we hired Barry Ritter as a consultant? Because this is his area of expertise, and after he had many, many meetings with various groups and with elected officials and stuff, and what do we want and what do we need and, and what that, can we offer, he's the one that thought this would be the best solution for us. Is that not true? Uh, yes. Okay. And how we got to hiring a, a service like that is Barry has somebody on staff that is in the medical services and still is today. Um, and he's used to doing those proposals and bids and, and so forth. Um, how we arrived at that is Lutheran wrote the contract for the prior commissioners that were sitting up here. And um, that contract was not written for our benefit. It was written on a benefit of who wrote that contract. So with that being said, um, the contract was going to end soon and Akron pulled out um, and the ambulance. So now we're down to two and we're on positive <coughs> versions and they're being spread thin like most ambulance services are. We need to be in a proper contract. So the summer that they did that, I asked the commissioners to hire a service to look in for that contract and we start writing a proper contract because something else was going to happen because every so many months they were doing something different like pulling out, moving trucks, and so forth, which were upsetting your citizens of Fulton County. So again, you've got to be in their lane of traffic to understand what they were doing and uh, when they pulled out of Akron, Ron can speak for this. Um, that was very disturbing on that end of the Fulton County on the east side, and um, we had to move quickly, and this is where we're at today. What kind of assurances are they they giving us that they're not going to do the same thing? That was a private company before, right? Um, no, right? it's for profit. Lutheran is for profit. Okay. So you have a contract <clears throat> that they have to follow. Lutheran and this, is bidding on it again, right? They are. So. To me, that disqualifies them if they're going to walk away from it after they agreed to it. Wasn't there a clause in the contract that either party can terminate it? That is correct. Kind of like most contracts. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, we yeah. have to have an out too if we're not happy as the county. Yeah. You There'll know, be a they, quality assurance program. Yeah. If um, the county's not happy with the provider, we have to have the right to seek a new provider. There's no way to get around for it. We can have that and they can't, I don't think. Nobody's going to sign a contract where you can be terminated, but I can't terminate you. And I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know nothing about it other than it seems like it's been a problem. 
and we've jumped around different procedures. I think at one time we did have our own animal service, didn't we? Correct. And that didn't work out? It did not. See, and now I'm not, no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not part of that knowledge. So, well, that's, I mean, Woodlawn had it, it came to the county, and you, you look at the struggles because that proposal was given to us back to the, in the day, and that director started it up, it was working well, and then it just gradually, with the economy and things changing, things change. So, in their defense, probably the same way with Lutheran, who's for profit, I mean, in a way prices are increasing, somebody has to do something, so. They charge me for giving that right. Yeah. With my, <laughs> <for what? laughs> Any other questions for Gail? Thank you much. You're Thank right. you. Casey, I'm good. Thank you. Just observing. Just here. Go on. Just observing. Okay, so I've hit up all the department heads. Yes? All right. Next on the agenda, uh, 2024 budget adoption. So we have three budgets we're going to adopt. The airport authority, solid waste, and the county. And we will adopt them each individually. The first one is um, for the Fulton County Airport Authority. Resolution number 10172023, Fulton County Airport Authority uh, for the year ending December 31st, 2024. Uh, the Airport Authority Adopted budget five hundred sixty thousand wrong five hundred thirty thousand six hundred the um, tax levy three hundred ninety one thousand eight hundred four <coughs> for the tax rate of point zero four two four the cumulative airport building adopted budget fifty thousand tax levy thirty five thousand adopted tax rate. 0 0.0038 for a total adopted budget of 580,600, tax levy 426,844, tax rate 0 0.0462. Any questions or comments, board members? Anything you want to say, Matt? You okay? I do. Okay. Here to answer any questions if there are any. Okay. Any questions or comments, board members? If not, I will ask for a motion to adopt the 2024 Airport Authority budget. Ron, mo motion to approve. Is there a second? Lori seconded. All in favor, signify raising right hand. Motion carries 7 0. I will sign and pass. And when you sign, make sure you check I and not nay. Okay. The next budget is resolution number 10172023-A. This is for the Fulton County Solid Waste Management District uh, for their December 31st, 2024 budget. And the adopted budget for the solid waste management is $750,000. There are no taxes collected for the solid waste management district. Any questions about this budget? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve. With the motion. Okay, was that Steve? Yeah. Steve moved to approve. Who seconded? Pete seconded. All in favor, signify raise your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. I'm passing for your signature. And the last is our county budget. And I believe that all the changes have been made as a result of the email that um, was sent to all the um, department heads 
to let us know of any corrections or changes that they want made. And the people that replied uh, with some corrections, they have been implemented into the budget. So this resolution is 10172023-B. This is for the um, December 31st, 2024 Fulton County Council budget. The fund name, um, County General, the adopted budget, $9,715,451. The tax levy, $3,561,031. Tax rate, 0.2682. Uh, the reassessment fund, adopted budget, $191,869. Tax levy, 270639 Tax rate, 0.0204. Debt service, adoptive budget, $601,950. Tax levy, $526,830. Tax rate, 0.0397. Hume Bridge, <coughs> budget, 297400 uh, tax rate 305,354. Tax rate 0 0.0230. The health fund adopted budget $452,270. Tax levy $407,501. <coughs> tax rate 0 0.0307. And the last uh, fund where tax rates are established is um, Coombe Cap, total budget 346,000, tax levy 411,564, tax rate 0.0310, and the total adopted budget 17,029,682, adopted tax levy 5,482,999, with the adopted tax rate of 0.4130. Any questions or comments? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve the 2024 Fulton County Council budget. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Lori. Is there a second? No, sir. Ron seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. I will sign and pass. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is the uh, 2024 salary ordinance. And I believe uh, the changes that were indicated in the salary ordinance um, have been made. Ordinance number 10172023 and ordinance adopting um, County of Fulton, Indiana salary schedule and compensation policies, whereas the County of Fulton, Indiana is an equal opportunity employer, and whereas it is the intent of Fulton County, Indiana to comply with applicable federal and state of Indiana employment laws and regulations, and whereas Indiana Code 36-2-5-3, Section 3A <coughs> establishes that the county fiscal body shall fix the compensation of officers, deputies, and other employees whose compensation is payable from the County General Fund, County <coughs> Highway Fund, County Health Fund, County Park and Recreation Fund, Aviation Fund, or any other fund from which the County Auditor issues warrants for compensation. This includes the power to, one, fix the number of officers, duties, and other employees, two, describe and classify positions and services, three, adopt schedules of compensation, and four, hire or contract with persons to assist 
in the development of compensation and whereas Fulton County contracted with a professional human resource consulting firm to conduct a job classification and compensation study and Fair Labor Standards Act audit and whereas the Fulton County Council wishes to establish compensation schedules and pay policies. Now therefore it is ordained. You can read the rest of the salary ordinance. It's in your um, agenda packet on page 179. Are there any questions or comments about the 2024? I'm writing 24 up here. Oh, I'm supposed to be 23. Four, four. I can stop it. Any questions, comments? If not, is there a motion to motion for uh, to pass the ordinance? The first reading. Is there a motion to have this? Is there a motion to have the second reading of the ordinance by title only? We'll have third and last reading at our November meeting. A motion. I'm Randy sorry. made the motion, and Lori uh, seconded. We'll have the second reading by title only. Ordinance number one zero one seven two zero two three and ordinance adopting County of Fulton, Indiana salary schedule and compensation policies. We will have the third and final reading of the salary ordinance at our November meeting. Next. What's this? Oh, they, are these the minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next are the minutes from, from our Tuesday, September 19th. County Council meeting. Any questions or comments about the minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes from our September meeting as presented? Make a motion to approve. Chase moved to approve. Ron seconded. All in favor signify raise your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. I will sign and pass. Next on the agenda, transfer. Transfer request. Did we sign? Not transfers yet. We just vote on them? Okay. So we have two, or one, two, three. Three transfer <coughs> requests. Uh, the first one is from the assessor's office. That's probably why you're here, isn't it, Casey? Um, from the reassessment fund, we'd like to transfer $500 from maintenance equipment to printing with the explanation of printing for replacement, car magnets, and business cards. The commissioner did approve. Is there a motion for us? Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? A second. Lori seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. The next transfer request Superior Court from County General. Uh, $350 from postage to witness fees, explanation to pay an interpreter when she is here in December. Commissioners approve. Is there a motion to approve? Ron moved to approve. Is there a second? Laurie seconded. All in favor signify for raising your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. The third and last transfer request is from the circuit court from County General, um, $426 from mental evaluations to law books, 
and more money is needed in our law books account to pay our outstanding bill, the bills for $1,596, and we only have $1,170 in our law books account. Commissioners approved. Is there a motion to approve? Lori moved to approve. Steve seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. That's it for transfers. Next, uh, additional appropriations. And this is um, from the sheriff from County General. $1,100 due to the previously approved appropriation for part-time deputy, which is now being paid from um, County General. That was originally in fund 1170. Funding for benefits is now necessary as payroll. $1,100. Is there a motion to approve? Be moved to approve. Is there a second? Second. Randy seconded. All in favor <coughs> signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. I am signing and passing. Okay. Old business. P. Old business. No. Randy? No. Chase? No. Old business. No. Lori? No, ma'am. Steve? No. Ron? Oh, yeah. Me too. Christina. Anybody in the audience? Old business. New business. Uh, no Pete. Randy? Yeah, I do have some new business. I, uh, after discussion, <clears throat> as far as, and maybe a little clarification would, would be my, my desire. Uh, we talked about, uh, we, we hire a consulting firm to tell us basically how to manage our employees. Is that correct? Um, I'm going to say, if I truly understood what you meant, I would say no, but I may not be 100% clear. Well, we talked about uh, just in employee directions and from the department heads, they said they're they work for some group that makes recommendations as far as how they operate. Is that that's not true? He's talking about Wagner, Sherry, Sherry Leo. And okay, Rose. so so maybe you're talking about the job classification committee and and Wagner, Irwin, and Sheely. I'm making this up for you. Are, are the consulting firm that makes recommendations on on job descriptions and salaries in relation to those job descriptions? You mean that? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well. Okay. What about it? <laughs> well. My question, one question would be, what, what do we pay for that service every year? And our, do we need it? Um, I don't know, do we, is it a yearly fee? No. We I think it's as needed. We pay as needed. And do we need them? Yes. We haven't used them this year. We haven't used them this year. Right. So, do we need them? I don't know. Is, is it something that you want to consider for a later time at next year, maybe at budget time? Yeah, that'd be fine. I just, okay. I was under the impression we were paying them a consulting fee. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out where we're going to get money for the same ones deal. For so, this what deal? For the AM ones. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, um, you know, yes. we're paying some big consulting fee and we can don't really feel we're getting bang for our buck on it, then I'm just thinking out loud. Again. That's okay. Um, and we haven't utilized <clears throat> their consulting service this year. And um, I don't remember what the 
what their fee is, but in no way would it come close to an ambulance service. They're, they're not, not that expensive. I, I didn't know. I, I okay. knew they charged a fee, and I was just curious. They, they do charge a fee, is all. Consulting services do. That, that's a good question. I'm sorry, sorry, I was confused about what you were asking. No problem. Did you have any other new business? No. Nope. Okay. Chase, new business? No. Nope. Lori? No. Nope. Steve? No. Ron? Nope. I do. I do. Sure you don't have any? I know. So, so I have some new business because a couple of weeks ago, I stopped out at the highway department and then was asked about HSA and what happens to HSA accounts when employees reach 65 and um, by federal law, they can no longer take advantage, they can no longer receive HSA monies. Did I say that right? Yeah. I did? Did I say that right? Who knew? So what I did was, because I know nothing about this, nothing, nothing. So I sent Christina Haas an email, and she answered me. So I'm just going to read you the answers because I got this just before I came here. So bear with me. My question. I understand. So, so I know nothing. So these questions are going to sound stupid. Um, as I understand it, if a person is signed up for and enrolled in the county's health benefits, the employee receives an annual HSA of $2,500. She says yes. My next question to her was, this money, $2,500, is put on a debit card at the beginning of the year for the employee to keep and use. Her answer was, not at the beginning of the year. You will get $208.34 second pay of each month deposited at Lake City Bank in your HSA account. You guys all knew that. I didn't know that. My next question. I'm assuming the HSA debit card is to be used for health-related things, i.e. copay the doctor or dentist or over-the-counter items, but can the debit card be used for other things, um, for things other than those types of health-related items? Her answer. You can use it for medical care and services, dental and vision care, and over-the-counter medications that are covered with a doctor's prescription. You guys probably knew that. My next question, you'll learn not to ask me stuff. Does anyone in the auditor's office monitor how and when uh, the HSA debit card is used? No, that is on the employee. Um, she has no access to them, she says. You're subject to get audited by the IRS. Do what? Say again, Steve. You're subject to get audited by the IRS if you're not using it correctly. If, if you are compliant with the terms of it. Right, if you're using it for you know, by the you want to go to if, you can, if you cannot prove to IRS that you're using it for qualified medical <coughs> expenses, you will be taxed. Right. So I can't take it to the line or need? No. Okay. Believe you, I know nothing. No. Uh, my next question What if not all the HSA funds are used by the employee before the end of the year? Do the remaining funds roll into the following year, assuming the employee signs up for health insurance again, or are the remaining funds on the debit card at the end of the year lost? She says, You do not lose what is deposited, it is just a checking account that receives an amount per month by direct deposit. The county has no access to the funds. The checking account is owned by the employee. And my last question, this is really what Jeff wants to know. All this other crap he did. He doesn't want to know about. He already knew. My question, 
I understand when an employee turns 65, they have to sign up for Medicare. Also, per a federal law, that employee loses their HSA $2,500 benefit. This seems like a financial loss to the employee. Question, if the 65-year-old employee decides to sign up for the county health benefits, could the $2,500 the employee previously received in HSA be applied toward the employee's monthly health benefits premium that is deducted from their paycheck? Is that right? Is that the right, right way? Or just at least get compensated some way for it. And her response. Yes, we could do that, but a resolution, but an easy but. But a resolution would have to be done. <coughs> now, if if they were employee only insurance, they wouldn't receive the full twenty five hundred dollars because insurance for employee only would cost fifteen hundred and sixty dollars for the year, or thirteen hundred and eighty dollars depending on the deductible the employee chose. So, so, she did, so she did say yes, but yes, but yes, but the resolution. Well, since we're the, I don't know. So talk to me, Christina. Talk to talk to me about the yes buts. So it's us. So it's a council. So it's a council something. So then. Yeah. Why, why couldn't we consider this, talking out loud, and I have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> consider this resolution uh, to begin in 24. Read that. Read that too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read the answer. Yeah, her answer. Okay, because I don't understand what the fuck. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> uh, my question was, um, could the, the money be deduct, uh, applied towards their health benefit premium, okay, that they have to pay? But most so, of them don't take a health premium because they're on Medicare. If you've signed up for Medicare, why are you taking the county's yes, coverage? Okay, Jeff. You don't have to take Medicare so when you're 65. But mm -hmm. I thought the but county's policy was if you were eligible for it, you had to take it. That's what know. I was told. I don't no. know. Don't know. I don't like, you don't know? Don't know. That's what Jeff, I was told. Doug, talk to us. Well, I, I think and maybe thing, I didn't ask the right question. See? Well, I, I don't know if there is a right question, but the, the thing we're looking at is when we turn 65, all of a sudden we're penalized. Yeah. For term 65, you, you lose that HSA. We lose $2,500 of our money that we use for medical expenses during okay. the year. The other employees still get that. Okay. But we're, in a way, and I realize it's, it's not you guys, it's not the county, it's the federal government that's Correct. doing this. Correct. So, so that, that's kind of a new point on, on that part of it. But because we turn 65, we're discriminated against and that's taken away from us because of federal law okay is there any way because you're looking for ways to retain employees okay if you have employees that's been here for years that know their job and do a good job for you i would think anything you could keep them with instead of taking away from them would be a benefit to retain those employees so if there was some way that 2500 could get rolled into the yearly income of that employee when they turn 65 to where they aren't penalized for turning 65 and penalized for staying at the county work so then when you're when you turn 65 you no longer need or use or want to take advantage of the county's Health benefits. I do. I do. Because yeah. that's my supplement insurance at that point. Once I get Medicare, okay. that will be my secondary insurance. Okay. I'm sorry. So, so then, if you turn 65, you had to take out Medicare and insurance didn't cover you. I, I that's know. the way it was back in a few years ago. So, so, so then. Joe so, Morrow still is on county insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Joe Morrow is still on county. Yeah, you keep, I just got a letter from him the other day. He's seven. I'm eight. sorry. That 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 comes from back when Judy was here, and that's what what was that's, explained. That's what it was when I was on the council. Once you turned 65, you had to HSA take Medicare. stopped. You had to take yeah, Medicare. If you were eligible for Medicare. You no longer qualified for county insurance. County insurance now that may have been the insurance carrier that did that. I don't know. No, yeah, that's I was under the yeah. assumption it was still that way. That's the way it is. I, you have to talk to the insurance to see if that's if they're the ones doing that. Joe's taking it. He's seventy-eight. I just got a letter the other day that said, if, if you want to stay on the county insurance, that's fine. You just got to prove it to Social Security so you don't get penalized later on. For you don't have to get on Medicare until. As long as you've got some other insurance, you do not have to get on Medicare. Yeah, we, we understand that. What Lori's saying, and I'm the backing her up, is the county's policy in the past was you turned 65, you went to Medicare, and no longer was on insurance. Well, obviously, that's not the case anymore. You know, don't know because don't know who changed the policy. You'd have to talk to insurance well, or the auditor's office yeah. or so, Somebody should have an answer to that. So, so, so you still receive insurance. So, you so a premium is still comes out of your paycheck. Yes. Yeah, we are sixty-five now. I know. But don't we have to get like insurance involved in this? And let so, them tell so us I'm when the point I have. sent these questions to Christina, and I did last week sometime, and she. And I talked to her ahead of time and told her that, that I was going to email them to her, and I knew nothing about HSA, but some people asked me, and I told them I'd follow up. And then the last question, she said, I don't know about that. I'll have to talk to my, who is it, Apex? Yeah. Sure. Person. So I'm assuming the answer that she gave me is as a result of talking to the health insurance guy. I'm, get, I'm guessing. I understand their question, but the part I'm thinking of is that the 250000 was always part of offset our costs, the employees' costs. $250,000? Oh, $2,500. I'm sorry, wrong okay. $2,500. Sorry, sorry, sorry. $2,500, is that what it is? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Sorry. That $2,500 that was given to them was to offset the cost they had to pay for the employee's the portion of the insurance. Yeah. And that was used towards to pay your deductible. Mm -hmm. That's what it was created for. Okay. Then when you hit 65, normally you drop the insurance so you don't have it. And that's the reason you don't get the 2,500 because you don't have a deductible to meet with our insurance anymore. Okay. That's how it was designed. Okay. Years ago. Yes. Okay. Now, yes. if insurance has changed that, I don't know. But well, it sounds uh, like the federal government stepped in at one time or another and said, you yeah. cannot get yeah. that. And, uh, and I understand why, well, because okay. if you're on Medicare, you don't have to have the savings account. The not getting the HSA is not an issue. It's because it's gotten dried, but the, it's what the money that was going to that, why are we, why do we get penalized for? Because it was to be free to die. Well, for the med medical expenses, why do we get it penalized might be, for it? that's where it's for. I mean, I, I don't get it anymore because I don't have insurance with the county. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you still need a supplement, and that's what the county was for. That's the way Joe's done his for I don't know how many years. Yeah, and that, <laughs> that could be on that, but that's... But if they can get insurance through the county, and they can't get the HSA, yeah. then they're being penalized. Because so, they're so to speak. I, Yeah, but I, I don't, I guess I don't. I see the two tied together. You're taking sure $2,500 away together. from our annual income. Yeah, uh, I understand. Yeah. But I, I see the insurance and the HSA going together. To my, in my mind, should not need that. I understand somebody is. I don't understand why. But well, see, okay. I could have but an HSA if I was under 65, I could have an HSA mm -hmm. by myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have an HSA. Yeah, so but, so the the part of the government taking it away from us, uh, I understand that, that's just federal law, but all of a sudden we lose $2,500 of our annual income that we work for 
that the other employees are still getting. I don't see it as income. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not income. It was a benefit that went with the health insurance to pay your deductible. It's supplemental to your income. It is not income. Yeah, I think we need to like check if Doug's positive it's a federal law. I don't know that we can do anything to change the federal law. Well, no, we aren't asking for that. That's not our point. But you're asking us to go around the route to pay the money we're asking that we get compensated and for the money we're then losing. Then how do I make it fair away. to the younger people who then say, well, you guys are getting it, and we aren't. I, but I, I they are. Agree but with they that. are. But so, they're on the insurance, they're getting yeah. well, it. But it then you're getting 20. That they have yeah. yeah. isn't related but it's, it's, uh, it's yeah. for yeah. the deductible on their insurance. It's for the same. Pete, it is not. I don't, I don't agree. think it was either. I don't think no, it's not, it's not income. Exactly it's I don't not know. Income. Yeah, yeah, it's not income because it's, it's not. I don't think we can answer this tonight until we yeah. talk to your insurance I don't people agree. and all that. When I asked you, Phil, I just wanted to do Yeah, okay. Just to look into it. Okay. And like I said, you know, when I talked to you, Jerry Hartford asked a year ago about it. Right. You guys said you was going to look into it. And and I, I dropped the ball, so shame on me. Yeah. So so it looks like sounds like we need to do more investigation. Yes. A little clarification would be nice to have on the use of it because I've heard <clears throat> everything yeah. from band aids and toothpaste. To, uh, you gotta have a prescription. Mm -hmm. So now yeah. somebody's wrong there. Yeah. Which one is wrong? Yeah, it's a prescription from a doctor or a doctor or hospital or whatever. You can't you can't go and buy a premiums, a box of band aids or mass powders. I can't buy or not get any of the powders. Got a prescription. The insurance guy told me different than that. You still do with the change that for you. Yeah, that may be. We're changing back over. And he may be. I think we need to investigate it. Yes, that's what we have. So I have another new one. Another one? Okay. Yeah. So I have so I'm just telling you what well, he did. But he's he's on the United Ministries board. So he's asking for money. Um, the, the United Ministries board is low on family outreach funds, food for the um, for the money for the food pantry, for the Christmas food basket, and the rent and utility assistance for families. He heard that we, or ARPA, gave money to the Compassion and Healthcare, their funding, and called me to ask me if we have any funds available that we could contribute to the United Ministries Board. I said, I'm not sure how much, I'm not sure. I will bring it up in new business. There, I brought it up. Come before our. That's me. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Let's put Pete on another board. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I brought it up. There. I mean, we don't have a social services line item in the budget, so I told him I'd bring it up. I did. You betcha. I know. Okay, that's all the new business I have. Christina, new business. No. New business, anybody? There's if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? Randy moved to adjourn. Steve seconded. All favor signify raising your right hand.